on the shore, bro. You got to. You should. Be, you should be scared to go deep. Because when I, I, I'm petrified. My, my journey, my journey, my journey with Christ in the Bible is going deeper by the day. Shark, and it is petrified, but it's also glorious. Are nice Whales are nice people. Terrible creatures of the deep. They don't have to be bad. They're just creatures of the deep, man. You can be. You can be one of the species that 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 they like that that sucks on them and and, and, and cleans off all their barnacles. It doesn't fucking matter. That's what that's what holds up society. He's blood right. sucking mofos, right bro. What right? I believe people are speak on behalf of God because that's what the all these books that we're fighting. What right do you think that man has to speak on behalf of God and write Bibles and books and things? On okay, so that requires a definition, a predefinition of what we believe as God is. Who says what God has planned for you? Who says? Man doesn't. This, so beautiful. This is, this, this, this is difficult because trying to speak to people who aren't open to God being true and um, Jesus being God in the flesh, it's very difficult to have this conversation with them and I choose not to. People, it's 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 a lot like it's a lot like when when I speak flat Earth with people and all they do is come on and they're trying and I'm not saying you're doing this. Um, it's it's like when 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 I Thanks, speak man. to people about flat Earth and and they come on and they're just being cantankerous and they're just bringing it back to the globe. They don't want to learn. Um, and if you, if people don't want to learn, they just want to disagree. I just prefer not to have the conversation. There's people, there's people out there listening now. My words are probably resonating with, and there's other people probably think I'm just a nut job, you know. Um, and and my part of my purpose, part of my purpose. So my purpose in life is um, the purpose that Jesus has put out for me. Um, I walk with Jesus. He's my purpose, and every day it just gets better and better. And part of that purpose is to bring others within the temple, with the elect within the temple, and they'd be out there now listening. And if I can save one person, I've 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 done well in Christ today. My and brother. if other people, if other people yeah, choose not to, if right, other people choose right, not to right. go that way, we go right, the other. Right. And that's completely up to them. That's, and that's I'm not. 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 I'm Hang on a second. Just one second. I just want to say Owen from Australia has joined us and he Hello. might be very interested in hearing some of the stuff he says because he's been plotting the stars and he can keep up with the stars. But Owen, welcome. You're here with Gathica. You're here with Brett. Obviously, Brett wanted this hangout and it's really great. We've got we're here with Trouble About, all Australians, and then it's me and Patricia. Pommies. The usual guys, yeah. Uh can you hear me okay? We can. Loud and clear. Uh, yeah, mate. I lost can my even mind. see you, mate. Can even see you. Awesome. Owen, where are you in Australia? Yeah, um, near, right near Cairns. But, oh, nice. Uh, yeah, I, to I totally see uh, where Brett's coming from. We've got the, the sun and moon rising and setting in the, uh, in the far south. And then it arcs over our zenith into the north. Um, yeah, it's quite interesting. So you're you're north of the Tropic of Capricorn there, and uh, not no. far, not far north. So I think the Tropic of Capricorn goes through Rockhampton for memory. Yeah, yeah, it's um south of me, supposedly. I don't think it's actually actually correct, but uh, it doesn't exist. <laughs> no, that's. It might be the sun's. Uh, it's not its apparent position. That's for sure. It's, uh, and um, Owen, as you're here, as you're here, and just explain to Brett, obviously, and Gathica as well, and trouble about what that experiment you did. I know it's been on sun and moon. You don't have to spend ten hours doing it, uh, but what was uh, the experiment? Surface speed tests. So I'm, I'm rolling telescopes and cameras across the ground and looking at the footage, looking at how the stars scale and act in accordance to those movements. And, uh, yeah, we're definitely geocentric. 
according to my I think tests. we all agree on that. I think we yeah, all agree with geocentric. Yeah. And I totally agree that the, the, the sphere, the ball we're taught, just it cannot work. The, um, the Tropic of Cancer's in the complete wrong spot on the ball. Go on. I, um, I could give some examples. I forget how to screen share. But um, even on st <laughs> uh, programs like Stellarium, anyone can jump in and have a look. The sun is rising and setting in the south in during the um, summer solstice in Australia. And, uh, it is. and the Tropic of Capricorn is supposed to be north of places like Tasmania, New South Wales. I've been to New South Wales myself and seen it. The first thing, um, the first night in New South Wales, I thought to myself, the equator, I'm on the equator now in Sydney. How does this make any sense on the globe? So I see where you're coming from. It's a conundrum. <laughs> yeah, g'day, mate. Nice to see you. I'm so going to ask you. Yeah, glad someone else joined me. Yeah, yeah man. I can, I can resonate with one or two things. Well, like taking steps up, and then we get out to a ledge, and we want to know if we want to dive in. And I have to say something that I've found the spirit of Jesus when I was. 16. The first time I've ever said it, and probably the last time I'll ever say it, and because I don't need to say it. Um, whatever that means for people, it's just like a when you when you can learn what that joy is, you can call it anything, and that's great. So here we are, and we're going to find out what's going on. How good's that feel? Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's a fun mystery. Man, oh, it's yeah. a really big mystery because I don't know anything about a lot of this stuff, so it's interesting to me. Owen, can I ask Owen? Owen, how do you see the sun to, compared to – I don't know if you've seen any of Brett's videos. Um, yeah. How, how do you – um, Well, right now it's actually it, – it's arcing in my sky. It's rising in uh, – the southeast and setting in the southwest, but it is arcing and almost coming directly above my head during midday. Uh, whereas for that, I'm pretty sure it's um, doing the same thing, but it's arcing all the way over his head and then going back south. At, at midday, where is it? Is it directly above or just slightly north or slightly south? Slightly south for me. So I do think it's in between you. Is that you right? And... Is that right? Yeah. Uh, Stellarium can verify it as well. Uh, pro, uh, it's in the southern sky for you all day. Yeah. Is it so, going to be like? Is it going to be like this, bro? Bizarre. So I'd say the further south you go, so when you go to Tasmania and Melbourne, I'd say the arc's more savage. So it goes, it, it, it rises further south of east and then it goes further north of centre in the middle and then, it, and then it sets further south of west. So it's a big, big arc with a, with a more north you go, it stays in the southern sky but the arc's less. Yeah. yeah. Picking up what I'm putting down? Yeah. I, I agree with you there. Um, That's fascinating. I wonder at what point it, it, it hits north all the time. Because it's in the middle of the in the middle of the day, it's further south as you go north. Oh do you, I see the same thing in France. It's sort of fading away the wrong way in winter. Well, um, uh, I, I'm still, uh, I'm not locked into any model either, but I, I still consider I myself a flat earther just because of the um, the long distance ground measurements we've been doing 
uh, well, the math anyway. So I think we we are on a flat surface, but there's something else going on in the skies that might be able to explain it. Yeah, we're, we're like in the, we're in the womb of the mother of the spirit, my brother. Like like any fetus being born, how could you ever possibly understand the world that awaits you? So much beauty, so much. And that's why I'm not a flat earther. That's why I'm not a flat earther because I don't actually know. Like I think the Earth's flat. Everything I see it tells me it's flat. The Bible tells me it's flat without actually saying it. But all the all the clues in the Bible tells me it's flat, and my senses do. But I can't get up high enough to see it. So I, I'm not one to say. I, I, I know, and I'm not going to identify as a particular thing unless I do know, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah I think well, it's you, flat, and I and I yeah. resonate like I, I like re, uh, flat earthers resonate yeah. with me. You know, I, I listen to flat earthers because I well, probably am one. Yeah, well, that's it, man. There's there's no there's no curve, mate. That's for sure. Oh, but it's not a globe. I mean, that's settled. That, that's what I said in my video. I don't, I don't want this to be a debate about the globe and all that because it, it's settled. I mean, it, it, it's just, to me, that, that's what woke me up was the moon landing and then I went straight from there to, 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 to the globe. And it's just a deception. I mean, you look at, you know, when you get to my point and, and Jesus says eyes to see, he's to hear, you look at you look at things like the ISS and they're just evil-looking people and, and the deception's sure. just right. When it can come to that or... That or that, my brother. There's so much other beautiful stuff to know, like about the flowers and the trees and how they interact. And there's all these well, beautiful sciences. And you can learn them in trees school. Are fascinating. And there's nothing wrong with learning trees stuff in school. Oh, what I reckon, we're mate, missing, we're, missing, we're supposed to learn everything water. at once. You know, we're supposed to learn everything at once. And it's just like the old fellas used to say, mate, we were given this place. Just to give three regs r rules, bro. Don't steal, don't kill, don't be greedy. And they kill. So I don't know. Where's the circle? We got to create our own circle now. That's what it's about. Well, isn't that what we're doing today? Isn't this like you know we've got um, obviously you're in France, people in Australia, people in the UK, all the chat room. We're doing that now, and we're talking. So yeah. we're doing that. Now, comes guys down, are, that's like digital, oh, digital, guys, guys it's good, you know, bring it in, in everyday, everyday life. Sorry, Karen, I'll, I'll let you go. We've got a good connection now. That's great. Yeah, it's all it's all amazing. But I just want to, because, you know, Owen has done his own experiment with the stars, and I want him to explain that, because Brett would love it. I don't know about you, because obviously you're going to start looking yeah. now, aren't you, Kathika? But, um, oh, my gosh. Yeah, I'm really like... um. The kid in the back of the class sticking his hand up all the time, going "What? Wow!" Because I know a lot about social sciences and uh, other other aspects of things. Because that's I'm passionate about knowledge. That the real knowledge is to know that you don't know anything. So um, if you guys have been doing this stuff and we can graft it and put it on paper, I'll be I'll be right here. You know where I am. Yeah. Owen, do you want to do you want to explain a bit about that star experiment? Because it's really important. Owen's one of the only people to have done this. All right. Well, well, a, a basic one. Say so they say the Earth's spinning a thousand miles at the equator. Uh, my longitude would be nine hundred and something. Um, so this device I have, it's just a telescope on a on a board with wheels so that I can move it left or right. And I, I line up uh, east-west with a star. And they say the apparent motions of the stars are caused by that surface speed of the Earth, the, um, the 900 mile per hour surface speed of the Earth. So uh, to put it simply, um, if I if I travel one mile, one mile per hour with my telescope on wheels, and it's locked onto a star, and if I travel, uh, so east, uh, one mile. Oh, sorry, sorry. If I tra if I travel west one mile per hour with this telescope. 
the uh, in in the footage, mathematically, stars should only slow down zero point zero one percent. I have to go back and look at the maths, but they they should only slow down by a small percentage. But in, uh, instead of slowing down, they completely reverse and go the other direction. Yeah, you so, know what I reckon, bro. The the stars and the Earth do a bit of a dip, like a bit of a mmm, a little bit of a how you going. Every now and then we do a little bit of a dip. Yeah, that could explain such intricate deviations in the models or also could explain ancient astronomers curiosity with the stars and the earth and the planets and where we are and from whence forth we're born well oh uh, yeah I'll, I'll bring it up to read because my dip right now is lack of sleep actually <laughs> straight up cuz but that's cool because we go into the the different worlds when we have a lack of sleep Everyone should learn about clean water and um, fasting and also lack of sleep because you can get yourself into some really cool alignments with reality, you know? Yeah. Every now and then, man, you got to, like, walk, walk the, the midnight moon. One of the things that happens when you're a flat earther, most flat earthers don't sleep that much anymore. I bet you anybody in the chat room who sleeps <laughs> for hours, and hours anymore, you're researching uh, on how you're out, going to work, whatever it is, you're uh, hardly any sleep. Four or five hours a night, guys, that's, if you're happy. That's where this uh, whole AE thing is critical because people fall for it and it's just another psyop. It's just another, it's not, it's another deception. It's just another, um, it's controlled opposition. Oh, and they just so much put everyone life. over there, and they get, they think that they think that all these crazy flat earthers, we've got them over there in the box. They're nowhere near the truth. They're driving themselves crazy. They're tearing their hair out. But it's like that. It's it's this sort of stuff that they don't want. You know, just a bunch of like minded yeah. people going. Well, hang on. No, it doesn't. Uh, work. This is playtime, man. And what are they going to say? Uh, put ten papers in the bin. <laughs> you ain't gonna put ten yeah. papers in. Nah, bro, we're that's talking the world. about that, 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 that's, yeah, a, man, that, that's that's exactly how the world works. Uh, yeah, this like, is like we, we've stone got, man, stone man we've got stuff, a green bro. man, we've got a and we've got a red we've got a green man, we've got a red man on a sign which tell us when we can cross the street, you know? That's how stupid society's got. That's how nah, just that's controlled that's we've become. For the boys, mate, that come behind us going, woo, 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 woo. Uh, you just uh, ran a red light, sir. Uh, you oh. need to pay. <laughs> uh, are you ready, Owen? Have you got your stuff on? No, man. I can find it. But, 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 I can see the I've done it in a car as well. The big waves. Owen? The big, oh, curvy, oh. the big barrels, bro. They'll test you. Owen? Just got to know how to breathe. Yeah, oh, bro. yeah. I'm with the bro, the Owen, Maroubra you... boys. <laughs> Fucking respect Sydney. Yeah. To the fellas. Fuck yeah. Owen? Ripping it up. Huge swells, bro. Massive swells Can of the curvy water. Can you take me through water. just your findings again, mate? I, I sort of, I couldn't get my head around it. You, I know you were travelling with with the stars at a kilometre an hour at the same yeah, I'm direction. Yeah, more with the stars. Oh, okay. Well, well, it started. Um, I'm, 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 I'm like, I'm, I'm ground, but I like to swim. Um, I started by driving my car west, right? And if if the yep. Earth is spinning a thousand miles per hour, I mean, if that is the explanation for the motion of the stars, I should have to drive my car one thousand miles per hour west to stop the apparent motions in the sky. I should have to travel faster than a thousand miles per hour to reverse the motions of the stars. I'm able uh -huh. to reverse the motions of the stars with tiny, minuscule movements down to centimeter per. Second, uh, nice. So it's, uh, I, I can't. Uh, if you're on Facebook and if I can get an email, I'll share some the footage with you. I actually don't know how to screen I'll put share. My, oh, I'll put my email in the group chat here. Um, 
it's oh. um it's a, is it the star one i can send him that one owen do you want me to yeah. send him the okay. yeah i'll send him oh, thanks, I'll, I'll, I'll screen share some footage of this star that i made i made its apparent motion go east um you know to do um, application don't do the entire screen otherwise you show i'll just i'll just put the link on to trouble about with the moon okay while you do it here we go so what was your um latitude again for the test um all right it was 927 you said was it Oh, that's the speed, yeah. 70 degrees south. That's interesting. So detracting that, have you – I don't know if you've – there's not a lot of um, mathematical equations about the different, different – in the – You're breaking we, up, Gaffer. Yeah, of course. That could that could happen. <laughs> Planets of <Okay>. apes. <laughs> of course, that could happen. Sorry, I'll, I will turn my pineal gland down. Can you click the page now because it keeps going back to the hangout? Is it on? Is it on now? Because it went back to the hangout. Right, it's not now. Link. <laughs> right. Is it, can you see oh. No, it's so. On. What I'm saying straight up, hope it comes through. Can I There's just say, some... wait a minute, uh, Gathika, wait, please. Um, Owen, you're still showing the link, so I can't put it across because you're showing the link right That's now. Right. Put the hangout down. Yep, it's back to normal. I don't have oh, to okay. share it. Okay, you're not going to share it. Um, I didn't think we were going to talk about surface speed tests. I'm just not prepared at all. I was. Uh, uh, I thought, so, I thought, um, Brett was going to share some uh, Stellarium photos, or uh, now let's, of the sun and sky. But we've already verified that between us. Let, let, let's let's. That's okay, man. We're not even playing checkers tonight. Not chess. It's just Twister. It's just Twister on the beach. I, I did have a question and for Brett. I don't mean any offense. Good times. You know Lord Stephen Christ? No. Um, no. 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 Okay, he's got um, a convex. He's a concave. Concave. Con Mr. Concave. Concave. Yeah. Let's see, yeah, you want to get next to me? I'm, I'm got to get Donny grab tea. Well, um, sorry, yeah, no. I'm sorry. You just, just you just. You guys look very familiar, that's all. Very similar, I should say. Old school, mate. Is he? Do we? I've never... I, I don't know him. I don't know him. Who looks similar to who? Well, let's get it. Oh, there's a guy on YouTube. <laughs> I, I thought he might he might be you and that... Oh, um, really? Your alias. No, yeah. no. Me, bro. I'm going to be. That's me. Here I am. On the G man. LCS or LSC? Lord Stephen Christ. LSC. He's just some um, old school. I don't know. Um, he's got LC. some amazing models to um, try to explain the daylight hours. Yeah, just really, can we just listen to Owen for a minute? Go on, Owen. Oh, what do you want me to talk about, Karen? <laughs> talk oh, sorry, about Lord say. Stephen Christ. I'm just clearing this up because I came in here thinking I'd be debating Lord Stephen Christ or an alias of him uh, just because <laughs> Brett looks very similar. <laughs> to me, he looks like you didn't cut your beard and your hair. That he needs looks to like Gattaca. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, because I'm so like the, that's the correct way. Thank you, Brett. I'll be back. We don't say... In the presence of someone else, he looks like you, and I say, you look like him. No at all. I, I just wanted to say that. Let's just keep it all really nice. All, all I'm saying is that Brett looks like someone else, but I don't think he is, okay? Okay. 
No, yeah. it's, he's, he, bad, this bloke's no. a Freemason. It's not. He's a Freemason. I'm not. I'm not him. <laughs> um, just in, just in terms of the the uh, the conch, um, vex earth and, and stuff, I was talking to one of my subscribers this morning, and where I am at the moment, if I have to pick where we are, I think we're sort of it goes it goes a little bit downhill. So you start at uh, the North Pole is sort of the most northern point of the Earth, and then it all goes downhill from there, and that would explain why why lakes are formed and and dams and things like that because it's the it's the water getting caught. A little bit like the side of a of a canyon that that, that gradually goes down down to its um, bottom. If I was a betting man, that's that's where I am at the moment. Very very slight, you know. It's still pretty well flat, but it sort of just goes down a little bit down to the south. That's where mm. I am. Mm. That's a bit tweaky. Bit like a spinning top. Ugh. Bit like a spinning sort of top, like you a... know, and the sun has. Yeah. A, as the sun goes, as the sun goes out to our to, to this time of the year, it's like a spinning top, you know, and it goes and it go, um, and it, that's why it gets closer to us as it goes down. Just sort of where I am. Should I blow one for the ancestors, guys? Yay! Hey, it's for you all. I love you. Ready? <laughs> Viking oh, one. Thank you. Um, Very thank nice. you for blowing yeah. the Thank you. Um, sorry, what was what was going on? I've now I've lost thread now. What were you saying, Brett? Oh, just just about where where I sort of um, th think where it could be, and and remember, I'm open to England being south of me at the moment. The way things are starting to pan out. So who knows where anything is, um, but I, I just I think it could sort of run just slightly downhill, and that's sort of why dams and lakes and and that sort of stuff are there. Things like bodies of water are there, like the Great Lakes in America, where I live here. We've got we've got um, we've we've got a, like a, a lake system here, and that's sort of where the f water gets caught um, because it's slightly downhill. Some of the maps they put Australia the other side of America, don't they? On some of the maps. Well, they do. They put it everywhere. They put it, and, and and there's hints in the lies. Like with the lies, there's hints all the time with what they give us, and there's that they put stuff every. Like you mentioned Greenland before. Um, I've heard in actual fact Greenland's the size of Victoria, whereas on the map it's the size of Africa. You know. Okay, I'm the concave Earther. <laughs> I like I like the map where Australia is in the middle. And yeah. The continents are together, and it makes sense. I, I I always say to people, trouble Australians are the only people in the world who don't speak with an accent. So I like Australia being in the middle of the world. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So <laughs> um, I I just checked the math. So if I did this uh, surface speed test right on the equator, and I started moving my telescope uh, west without breaking its alignment. So it's it's locked at 90 degrees, so I can't turn it this way. It's locked, and the only motion is lateral, so I'm pushing it laterally west. And if I'm going one mile with this device, one, lat um, one, one tangent mile, uh, the this, this star's apparent motions should only slow down 0.1% because um, one mile is 0.1% of a thousand miles. So these things should scale and act accordingly if they were actually accurate um, mathematical models that they're giving us. But um, with that yeah. one mile motion, That's not only did they slow down, but they Sorry. totally reversed and went the other direction. As if we're completely stationary. Man, that's fucked up. That's just to catch up on the math, so. Um, yeah, wow. I'm vibing that. I'm vibing I've that. Time. The copper at my door. So, apologies for running away on you, sir. I did overhear, though, speculating on concave and, uh, and land masses being messed up. I'm taking. Uh, 
I'm a dome head at the moment. I tried to put a condom on my head just then, <laughs> but it broke, so I don't think it was supposed to be. <laughs> but, uh, I'm a dome head. I've recently been looking into convex and concave lenses and things like that. Uh, got another YouTube video where I've it's I'm just playing with a, a light and a popcorn lid and you can do all sorts of things with lenses. So if the, if we have lenses in the skies over an A over the azimuth or equidistant, if we have um some sort of convex lens over our heads, this could bend the light and cause the apparent sun to rise and set in the south when it's on its southern orbit. Um, in my opinion, convex lens could bend the light into your eye. You'd see the sun in the south, but that's just because the sun's light is curving into your eye from the south. Its true position is far in the north. It's a pretty trippy thing, but I believe it's possible with lenses and with God's creation of anything could be possible. Yep. But that's where it's I'm sorry, you, Yeah, you have. sort of, you, you, you go into a, a realm here where one of, I was talking to one of my subscribers this morning and she she's talking the same sort of thing. She's sort of saying that the sun, and we went through Genesis together this morning, um, and she's sort of saying the sun might be, in, in the water above and and that that's sort of the that that lensy type things happening and and that's you know, that's what you're saying there well we can't be sure without getting getting up there yeah but genesis says as well that it's inside the firmament which is heaven so that's not in the water so it's yeah, nice. it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're in the, the womb we are the million sperms in spirit's creation my brothers and sisters. And someone has realized that it's a fight for the mother. That's gross. That's really gross. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a microcosm, a problem of the macrocosm, brothers and sisters. Paint your floors and keep working to make a healthy Christmas, a healthy household, and say, smile. With your, with, your, with your surroundings and your BMW and your bloody cars and your richness and don't give a fuck about what's actually going on because you don't live in the nature. You haven't kissed a tree. You don't know what's going on. And the beautiful people that can bless it that. And that's where the smile becomes prominent. See? Because the people of Australia... They still say, G'day, hey, go on, mate. Yeah, let's go have a beer at the pub. <laughs> just like... Hey, just asking then on that score, um, Brett and Owen, how far, and, and, and Trouble, how far do you think Australia have gone with the deception and lies and stuff like that? Uh, how far we're, we're what? Sorry? Uh, it's a rich country, how, Australia. How far I'll, is Australia? I'll answer like life. this. I'll answer like this. We've just provided $41 million a year to a space agency. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just coming to Brisbane next week. If, if I try to talk to my family about any of this stuff, they think I'm nutty. Still taking poison medicine. I mean, I have a few people, cousins, you know, younger people, but definitely not my age onwards. You know, they're still convincedly on the year box and convinced the world is not the way. I think. Oh. Can I just ask what Owen, what are you showing us? Just asking. Uh, well, um just uh oh, we'll talk quantum physics lady. Uh it, that was just a popcorn lid. I didn't even have a torch in my hand. It's just a popcorn lid and a fixed light on the ceiling, and I'm just uh, changing the angle on the popcorn lid. But I'm trying to show that there could be 24-hour um, light in Antarctica. Um, in oh, summer solstice, I think even on an AE map, the sun could light the entire of the Antarctic Circle 
could explain why we see it coming and going from the south, though it's north of us when it's above our head. Because astronomers say the most accurate position or the most accurate way to tell where a celestial body is is wait till it's directly above your head because you get less refraction through atmospheres, lenses, things like that. But, um, yeah. The you make that thing bigger. The popcorn lid is flat. It's not even convex. So with a convex lens, we could get even more more trippy possibilities. Um, I'm just working out how to screen share, and I've got it now, Karen. I've got Thanks. It. I've got it. I'm um, showing it. I'm showing it, Owen. Yeah, I know. I've just worked it out. I'm remembering. I've got right. okay. I'll, check, I'll, um, I'll bring up a, a different one. Now then. Cool. Yeah, no, it's so nice stuff. Yeah, they're all like, we could be, and they could be putting stuff in our food and we wouldn't even know it. And, um, yeah, what's the Australian Space Company? It's A R S E, is it? A R S E, yeah. They're, call, they're calling it R. It's Man, they're the, they're the dudes. They're the dudes that lost the telemetry data from the NASA space missions. That's just <laughs> through there laughing at us. There's, there's, oh, it's big laughs. Yeah. Mm. I've, I've, I've the I've Australian been, mm. already. We know. We know. Have you been we to parks and fields in the middle of nowhere? Print, print that love. That's where we come from. Mm. Fold it back. It's beautiful. Watch it ripple. It's like a butterfly effect. Yeah. That's, it's, all, that, that's where all the mysteries come from. And then we'll know they're only mysteries. Down down under again, aren't they? Come and get some of that. Yeah, they, they can bring it here. The bottom again. I love, I love it. I dream. I remember my dreams every day since I was four years old. Mm-hmm. <laughs> come inside. Learn to breathe. Mm. Land down under the bottom of the world. Us space companies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Brett said that he doesn't see many stars in the actual south. Is it the same for you? No. I, um, I got a new camera last night, actually. That's partly why I'm tired as well. I was out photographing because they were very brilliant last night. See the whole Milky Way. I just thought I'd share a photo. There are some some in the southern sky, but not many. There's a lot more in the northern sky. They're more concentrated in the northern sky. But as I say, it's pretty bright on the ground, so it could be, you know, it could be that it's diluted. You don't actually know until it's back. Um, I, um, I see it here. There's, there's, there's definitely more. There's definitely more in the in the north, and there's precious few in the south. <laughs> It's so amazing. That's that's what it is. It, the further you get to the equator, it's more amazing. The star charts are as more anomaly, if you will. Am, there's something. Am I wrong? There's something down south. There's something down south, and it's not cold. It's hot because that's where the sun goes. It's no, the sun you, right now. you mentioned earlier, Brett, and there's no actual footage of. Um, going back to the globe model, a 24-hour sun in the uh, bloody yeah. you know, no. There's no, no, there's no, because that this. would work on a globe model, but there's none. There's oh. no footage, and that's yeah, that's yes. Bing. There's so proof we of deception will, too. There's proof well, of deception. Yeah. Like you have a you have a look at the um at the at the live sort of 24/7 footage down there and they never do it it's always cut it's always cut you never see it constant it's, there's mm. always a cut and they paste it and there's deception there i was just down so there this, yeah it's it's similar you said before i'll just jump jump in with this because it's like when you i, I learned high diving so i learned how to dive into water and all the, the only water i ever dive, dive into was flat so you want to do a one meter a three meter do a five meter seven meter and then when you get to the top and you're doing 10-meter dives, man, there could be people. It's like people jumping in and you've got to build up your truths, take step by step, and then just learn to dive in and go bim, like, and start 
measuring shit, you know? Because that's where the flowers grow. Is in all of that. 24 hour sun in the south. I got a friend to go to Tasmania for me. And uh, we both took took a photograph at the same time, looking west. Nice one. Just to check, and um, I can't share both. That was my photo from Cairns, seventeen degrees south, uh, at seven p.m. This this is during summer solstice as well. So this is the same time last year. The same time. Do you have the compass? Do you have the compass lined up, Cuz? Uh, I do. My friend didn't, and uh, I didn't have proof of it in that photo. Yeah, but because if you're on a higher elevation, where it actually comes up from and where from your measurement is could be different. You know what I mean, bro? So it might be worthwhile doing drone, yeah. like simultaneous drone, um, drone I footage. Want, I just shit. want to test the difference in uh, longitude. And the daylight hours. So it's basically True. just to verify what Brett was saying. Daylight hours are not real. It's just a political um, thing they do to cover everything up. They change your clock for an hour when you go down there, but really you're not getting more daylight hours. You're getting the same daylight yeah. hours as you are here. You're getting more than the north are in the northern hemisphere. But if we were, we were on a globe, that you should see a drastic difference in this. But Alden, have you got any thoughts? So I've been thinking mm. about this a lot, right? So um, mm. the further south you go, the more sunlight you get during the solstice and the hotter it gets. But at some point, does that not stop? Because there's no 24-hour sun because they can't prove it and they can't demonstrate it. So at some point, it stops getting hotter and it stops getting longer, the days. You get what I mean? Yeah, I believe when you hit a wall. Yeah, you believe in the ice wall there. Eh? I think it's re just refracting. So you're getting the sun doubling up in heat because it's right next to a, a firmament wall. And it's firmament pretty much... Wall. I like that. Like that a dome. Uh, mm. So it's re reflecting the heat onto you doubly and uh, also curving its light on its... Um, it's Terminator line. We're led to believe the Terminator line is a perfect path, like a perfect line across Australia. I believe when the sun comes in, it has... Uh, I could share this as well, actually. I think I've got a picture just here. Prepared, yeah. So I, think, I believe it's more like... Uh, The womb of the spirit. That's the old Give mother. Give a second. Just yeah, here we go. You guys see this? Yeah, I just moved it just in case, but I'll put it back now. So this is in summer solstice, I believe that. Um, so as the sun approaches Australia. It, the Terminator line isn't straight, it's arced. So in the very early mornings, you've, you get the bottom arc of the sun, the very first bit of sunlight to hit your eyes, this, this bottom arc. I don't think you can see my mouse. But the sun's not setting and rising from the south. It isn't. For you. Looks like no an eye, picture. mate. Looks like an eye, a human eye. Mm. On this picture, it's not. Anyway, so what we see, Brett? Oh no, it is. That's what I mean. Hang on, I'll show that's, it again. That's reflecting off the. With... That's reflecting off the firmament, yeah, isn't it? Imagine, like a human eye. The firmament. Mm. The sunlight yeah. is going to hit your eye from the south, right on the in New South oh. Wales. You get a big view of this. Um, I got you, cuz. I feel you. It's like when you're surfing a wave, actually. It's like water, the energy pulling up and regenerating itself. Because well, we're all just elements. We're all just elements on a wave, aren't we, bro? Really? All of us? Some of us probably spend too much time on YouTube, but that's okay. Go out, get some sunshine, do yeah. some measurements like Brett, like Owen, like Karen, like all of you out there. Love you. <laughs>
on, on this. Surf bendy, on, surf bendy water every day, bro. Yeah. Shout on out. this, with, with what I saw out at the beach, I saw the sun sort of coming up from from Auckland, which is it's sort of doing here, but I, I saw it set. It was going towards Perth and then heading off into that direction still, where this is going over northern Australia, which is just a... Yeah, um, well, maybe Australia isn't positioned correctly on the A map. Who knows? Mm. Or well, maybe there's maybe there's um, a couple of suns going around. Vibrating. Well, gyrating. I'm just thinking uh, if to see an object, light has to hit the object and and bounce into your eye, hit your retina. Right. So. What if the object is the light coming from the sun? Uh, coming from the sun from the south, I, I, I'm not sure if that means the sun is in the south. I'm just, I'm big on refraction. I think, uh, yeah, anything's possible. No, especially not I'm vibing what you're saying. I'm vibing what you're saying. I was talking to one of my subscribers today, and she thinks that it's actually in the waters above, and that's your refraction and and stuff. <laughs> I think it's refracting. Off the waters above, but it's under. okay. But yeah, it's um. Do you know what it I kind of reminds me of? You it's know what it kind of reminds me of? It's almost as if you've got the looking glass, you know, the, the magnifying glass. Get a big old magnifying glass. When the sun shines through that, there's a beam underneath, and yeah. it's almost we've like got we're under the magnifying glass, and the, we've got the beam. But I just can't see if. Brett's son is going the way that he sees it, that he is, or there's more than one son. Hmm. No, well, who gives a fuck, really? We're all fucking paying yeah. millions and millions of dollars in taxes. So, oh, I'm sorry. Think, Wait, it's a funky called Medina. We're all getting nicked I think by that's the army. So we're here to because we, we're researching. That's right. what tonight's hangout is about. I'm, I'm curious. Just, guys, I was just Karen. for those. In the Karen, future, I think that's the, yeah. the I think that's the only explanation is we've got at the moment, and and Owen's alluding to it as well. Is that what we're seeing isn't actually what we're seeing? That to me, that's that's the only explanation there can possibly be, or that that things aren't where we're getting told they are. But when when you fly, like I've flown to the Philippines before, and I remember when I flew to the Philippines, I threw I I, I left Sydney and I flew over Brisbane, so I definitely flew north. You know, so. And I think when people fly on a plane and they go from Australia to England, they, they, they see what direction they're going in. So the whole thing's so confusing. Yeah, I've been taking a uh, compass with me whenever I go on an airplane. And okay. uh, last time, the uh, taking off was weird. He did a full-on spiral. He just spiraled up into the sky like this. Meanwhile, I'm there with my compass trying to yeah. write down all these bearings to, like, Tracker. They try and confuse you. Yep. And then where did you go to? How long was the flight, bro? How long was the did, flight? Do they do that every? Um, no. I, like uh, I've been from Kansas, Sydney, a few times, and just the time, yeah. the, the the time I brought my compass and notepad, he he just did this really weird takeoff. It, it just made everything really hard for me to actually map. But that's okay. That that happens, man. Sometimes with the air wet, the air traffic. I've been flying for fifteen years from Sydney to Europe, Sydney to Europe, and um, I've never seen. Any curve, man. I've got a look. I've got a. I've got a systems failure. My phone is low on battery. I hope to rejoin you, but I can't find my charger quick enough. I love you all. I'll try to share something. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I'll, I'll be back. All right, then. It's going to die. My battery's dying. Battery's dying. No battery. See you, Gatha. I'll let you. I'll see you back. See you back. I'll, I'll charge it from my Is it still working? 
Is this the... is. Yeah, maybe just turn off video for a while. Save some battery. I think he's gone now. Oh. I know his icon's there, but he does that sometimes. Anyway, sorry, you two, Owen and uh, Brett, keep talking. It's great. And trouble about, come in if you want. Right, so Owen's showing this picture of the... So what are you uh, showing us? That? This is a test device with... Uh, this is the raw footage from me pushing it one mile per hour. And I only did this for about a meter. Um, this star, it normally declines to, to the right of the screen. All the stars, if I just, if I didn't touch it, it would slowly drift to the right. But by pushing it west, uh, this happened. And, um, you know, I can't push a telescope faster than a thousand miles per hour. So it completely debunks the Earth's alleged a thousand mile per hour spin. Where I am 900 miles, but still I can't push my telescope 900 miles. I'd need to do that in order to reverse the stars. Given what they're saying. Um, but not only that, you... Uh, with this device, I think I can simulate what it would look like if the Earth actually went around the sun 66,600 miles per hour by fast forwarding this footage. Funny numbers, funny yeah, funny. <laughs> well, um, you know, if I fast forward this footage, uh, 66,600 miles time. We'll get a simulation of what it would look like if the flat Earth actually moved this speed, and it's it's insane. You can't even see the stars. I, uh, uh, for instance, in this video, I'll play it again. I fast forward it up to six times, and it's it gone in the blink of an eye. So I can't imagine fast forwarding this sixty six thousand six hundred times. Uh, so that's just standard. That's one, one mile per hour movement. That's times two, times three, times four, five. It's just gone. Yeah, you can barely even see it. It's just, yeah, completely wrong. Uh, You'll have to... Brett, 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 Brett. Brett. We've also got all these photos from Stellarium just to verify Brett's um, sunrise and sets because it, uh, it lines up exactly with what he was saying. So they're not even hiding it from us in most of the... Um, We've got a black screen at the moment, I mean. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just talking. In, in my... In my video too, I superimposed on there on the uh, what's it called the sky where you point your phone at the sky and it tells you what you're looking at. Um, I, super, I I did screenshots from my phone with that, and they're just they're just saying it that that it's happening, you know, on the app. So you're right; they're not they're not hiding. Yeah, they don't even hide it. It's just confusing. So people uh, well, really I think. I, well, I think only ninety nine point nine ninety nine point nine percent of the population either don't care or they they just don't want their beliefs challenged. And then the next lot of us, the lot of us that are left, they're just trying to confuse us. And that's yeah. why I just you know I, I just I really really encourage people not to argue with people about the globe. It's done. It's finished. What, what we're trying to find answers now. That that's done. We, that that's yesterday. Let's move forward to today. Although yeah, right. you're, I'm not no. telling you you should do your experiment. No, no, I'm not saying that. No. No. Please, please, I'm not saying that. No, no, no. I just wanted to share that. No, I mean, Karen asked me to. I didn't even come in expecting. But this, does this uh, oh, sort this? of simulate your skies? This is uh, just near Tasmania on Stellar on an app called Stellarium. Uh, they don't even hide it in this, but so it's uh, the sun's rising in the southeast. So yeah, it's just just south of the east line there. And then at midday, 
it's up in the north of your skies and then uh, sunset it's in the southwest it's in the west skies again but um I'm thinking this can be explained by refraction of the southern dome uh, just curving the light to your eye so uh, where, wherever the terminator line first hits oh we just lost Brett for a second do you want to hang on a minute or do you want to carry on I mean, just explain it to the chat room you can just because we oh there he is he's back again carry on uh, Sorry. I'm just saying this is uh that's what Brett's seeing or close to and even the apps verify it and that's down near Tasmania this this one but he'd be seeing something very similar to this with with an arc an arcing sun that moves from south to north and then for me that's I've got what uh, I saw, yeah. I've got the same arc but it doesn't quite make it into my north so just based off our, our midday photos, I do think it's between us. Just I'm going with that thought just because there is less refraction on the moon when it's directly above you. Uh, you can see that it's whiter when it's above you, uh, less distorted in shape. So I think uh, the best readings the most accurate readings of the sun we can get is at midday and you know maybe uh if we could get some solar filters involved we'd get even more accurate positions on its true location anyway but um yeah it's just an idea i have that this this southern arc could be um could be explained by uh, the Terminator line not being straight when it hits the uh, east coast. That it hits the bottom first. So, if you know what I mean, like the um, the first light to touch Australia is in the is in the south on the east coast. But it's only for you know a few minutes, so you might have a few minutes more daylight hours than us. There's no need to put the clocks forward an hour, I don't think. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. No. It just exaggerates as you go further south. But what you're saying to me, and I think, Karen, you're saying that at the moment it's in your far southern sky. So it seems to me the further north you go, um, the further south it's in the sky. So that means you're getting further away from it. It's the further yeah, south so you go. But the further south you go, the further south it goes into the sky, doesn't it? So wh I wonder at what point does it come straight over where it just does a true east-west line? Well, no, I'm it's thinking... It's got to be somewhere. The further south you go, the further north it is in your sky. But you are going to get it... Uh, you're gonna no, get no, more... I disagree. I disagree because in, in Brisbane, when I was in Brisbane, um, it was definitely more. it was more north. Like it was only just south of east when I was in Brisbane, um, but now I've come back here. It's it rises a lot more south, and then when you go to Tasmania, it's a lot more south again, and then you get you get longer days. I'm talking that this time of year now. Well, yeah, th this is this is yesterday. The, these predictions here. So for you, it's more north in your sky than it is for me. Looking at the midday. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. At midday, yeah, at, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I thought as you go further south, I'm, I'm saying as you go further, and that's. I think we're agreeing because as you go further south, it gets the, more the, the south in the sky. With these arcs, the, on a globe or an AE map, without lenses and without refraction and things, they should just be going straight across. Even on a globe, you know, we shouldn't get any arc. They should just be going straight across. It's, the sun should be following the um, the Tropic of Capricorn. It just doesn't do that. No, it doesn't. Yeah, this Tropic That's of Capricorn perfect. is almost... Yeah. Yeah, it's... So Spot there's on. some yeah. something more to play with. Listen, listen, you've thought about it. What have they done? They've put a straight line through Australia and maybe Australia isn't sitting like that. You know, it's a different... It's lying in a different position, like... 
when I obviously when I did those shots with Malk in Scotland and we did a pan around, we kept doing pan arounds and he had this light longer than me. Because the light was longer leaving him than me in the summer, then it, and it's supposed to be going off to America, then the UK must be lying on its side a bit. So the host to say Australia looks like that. We're looking at that line going through Australia and you're looking at it like it's sort of perfectly sitting there on that globe. It doesn't mean it's lying actually like that in reality. The other thing I just wanted to backtrack on, so just with, with the position as you go further south, so it sounds as though to me the further south you go, the further south it, it, it rises and sets, but the yeah. further north it goes at its zenith. But yeah. as you go north, it rises closer to east, but it stays in the south at the zenith, the further north you go. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's almost like there's something it, in the It bisects south. itself. It bisects yeah. itself because at, at midday like here, up. it's yeah. At, at midday here, it's further north. It's not further north than what it is there for you. But when it rises, it's further south. It's like it bisects itself. Oh my goodness! Yeah, it's it's uh, there's certainly some something very big happening down there. I think there's a reason for the Antarctic because, Treaty. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, yes. And, you know, they all go there, uh, all the so. hardcore ones, and, and Buzz Aldrin, they go there, and they always come back with a black eye. There's something about – I think that's where the bottomless pit is myself, but anyway. <laughs> Possibly. Also, what is this bit – like, a lot of people, I think it's Phuket, the guy who's out in Thailand, um, he was noticing that he could see these, you know, the spots when they happen on the sun. But when it was coming towards him, they were on one side. And then when it had done its, um, you know, the midday thing, when it had gone over, the spots had reversed to the other side. So what's happening there? That the sun flips and nobody notices it. Well, it's this uh, the sun spots. Yeah, they flipped. When it, in the morning, they were one side. And then when it had done, the, is that, what's, what's lunchtime called? Like the, the mid zenith or something. Zenith, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So when it had gone when it had gone into the afternoon, so over the zenith, the spots had changed to the other side of the sun, like the sun had flipped. Everything was reversed. I would say maybe pers just perspective, because your head's turned. Well, yeah. Oh, oh I agree. Yeah, I'll something. I'll tell you something. The other day. We noticed, listen, Dave Marsh noticed, right, that anything that's in the tropics – it will flip. It can flip. That's why uh, when the eclipse happened in America, although Mexico is in the northern hemisphere, um, because it's in the tropics, it's, it's eclipse was the other way around. And then he noticed that on the apps, the sun, the sun and the moon, they flip. Everything flips. Hmm. Because it's in the tropics. So there is something, there is something weird going on in the tropics. Yep, I, I saw the other day the, the waning crescent around about the time I did the video. Venus was out most of the day that day. Um, and I noticed it was, it was those, Venus was just to the top of the top part of the waning crescent. And then this, as it went further, it flipped. It, went, it was the other side and it was below it. Venus was below it when it got past the zenith. I thought, because I remember thinking to myself and thinking, what sort of an opportunity is this, you know? Got Venus out all day with the waning crescent next to it. Yeah, I think Trouble was saying that, that she thought Venus was out all day. Oh, it's, it's happening most days now. What, have you got up to there, Karen. See, see if you can see it up there during the day. Can you, can you keep an eye out the next few weeks? To see if you can see it there? Oh, I'm over there every day. Up by this. Actually, recently, like most of the time, I think it's just perspective. Just like we see the moon uh, opposite ways up from the north and south hemisphere, it's just because one's looking, one person's looking south and one person's looking north. Just like a, Agreed. yeah. But um, uh, a guy called Alex Carrion on Facebook, he had um, a tracking mount and he tracked 
uh, I think it was Jupiter and its moons. And he, he actually he showed that it rose, I think, perpendicular and then set on a bit of an angle. And he was trying to say that it was curving around the the northern the northern uh, berry center, the North Pole, the northern axis. And uh, I couldn't work that one out because he uh, it didn't cross his zenith, so it wouldn't have flipped. It wouldn't have been perspective that flipped it. He was looking at um, he was looking at Jupiter and and its moons, which are almost always they almost always have their own ecliptic. And he was looking at uh, yeah how that pivoted a bit. That stopped me a little bit, but uh. Yeah, who knows with this stuff? It's all weird, really. Brett, do you what? Do you do the stars as well, or is it the sun and the, the sun that, that gets you? Because everybody has their bit of a niche. It's stars growing, yeah. although he likes the moon. My yes. main passion's the moon. My my main passion's the moon. Um, but the the path of the sun, and I, I I've got a, a bit of an interest in the wandering stars. But You're right. Not really the stars. I'm not great at. I'm fascinated. Oh. Fascinated by the moon. I just think the moon's the biggest mystery to man. That's great. Why is it there? What does it do? You know? It's like a spaceship. I believe. I believe. It's like a, I believe the sun and, um, and they feed off each other. They feed off their, their energy. So at the moment, the moon's new. Um, so it's sort of like on a recharge and that's when the sun's at its strongest, and then when it's full, it, it, it feeds off the the sun feeds off the moon. Yeah, and they absolutely. keep each other in. They sort of it it, it balance, They balance each other out. The moon keeps the sun where yeah. it should be and stuff, like and a, a counterweight. Moon, it's it's like it balances out the hot day for the plants as well. Some plants need the um, yeah the humidity the moon brings. Uh, have you seen that test where you yeah. point that laser thing? It's heaps colder. Yeah, yeah. When it's in, when it's full at night, when you're in the moonlight at night, you can feel it. You can, you, you can Absolutely. almost smell it. The, the, um, the air's different. You can smell it differently into your nostrils when it's. When you can, when yeah, it's you can full. cool your drinks down in moonlight. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's weird though. It's almost like it charges because it's. It does get colder the fuller it is, and things like that. Yeah. So I'm absolutely with mm. you on that. Um, and and these these globalists, oh, the sorry, the trolls, the globalist um, troll monkeys, they come along saying it's the background radiation of space. That's um, uh, it's, it, that's it, as I say, the globes, context, the globes it, long past. I mean, yeah, you, no, can't you can bend do, water. You can do you both. Can't that bend either. water. So, well, you if can't you ever get water, and also. When I vacuum my house on a Sunday, my vacuum sucks. It goes, yeah, right. right? Yeah. How, how does our atmosphere meet a vacuum with nothing? It's just lunacy. And the, and the fact people fall for it is just, to me, it's just a, it's it's where society's at. Yeah, it's for just me, because it was people that. just if what whatever the man on the TV says, that's what they believe. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, if you ever, ever do get hit hit with this background radiation uh, quiz, it's that's easily debunkable because you you can wait till the moon's very low on the horizon, and you can have both of your you, your indicator and your test objects. You can have them totally exposed to the night sky. And direct just one beam of moonlight in on an angle sideways, and it'll cool it down. So it's not, yeah. you know, it's not the sky doing it; it is the moon doing it. I've seen people direct the beam into their house through a window and through a magnifying glass. That totally cuts out, you know. They're under a roof, so mm. yeah, it's amazing stuff. The moon is, I don't know, it's. I know. It's incredible, isn't it? Uh, that's why I'm so passionate about it. It's just, it's incredible. I call her a majesty. It's just, oh. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, yeah, I think I've spent more time with the moon than anything. I might be lacking vitamin D. <laughs> it's like um, at the moment it's new. I think it actually it's a waxing crescent tonight again. It'll only be about three percent, I think. So it's been new the last sort of couple of days. And because you can't see it, is it is it actually there? Of course it's there. It has to be there. It can't not be there, you know? Because as soon as it's a waxing crescent and a waning crescent, you can see it. It has yeah. to be there. Oh, else? It's just fascinating, I mean. I've got this thing where I try to see it. I try to see the moon as close to new as I can, and my record's down to about 36 hours. <laughs> nice. And don't forget, you see it completely the other way around to us. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Yeah. That's right. It's tricky. New moon, there's uh, no way you can get a solar filter in there. Because no. solar filter... No, I've, I've, I've looked light, and I've so. asked and there's... there's there's no footage. There's nothing of the new moon. No one can, so, nothing. Even with earth, earth shine, even if the dark side glows a little bit from light scattering or whatnot, it's because it's so close to the sun. They call, they say under the beams of the sun. That's why you can't see it. But I've got a I've, different theory I've, I've on that one. There. She never leaves I've us. I've got a different theory. I don't know if I've told you, but I went to work one day and the moon was there. So there for about an hour and a half. Yeah, I was in some hills. But we're not talking really high hills, but they were some hills. And I had to drive seven miles before I saw the moon again. And actually, it was now in the valley. So it looked like maybe it hadn't dropped, but it was over in the valley. And from the hills, I just couldn't see it. So maybe it's always in the sky, but it's just out of your view. And it's now seven miles away. And you just can't see it in your 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 unless you drive. And then I was thinking... If I had to drive seven miles before I could see it, how could someone in London see it or someone in Scotland see it? If I had to drive seven miles before I could see it, when he's looking, you become so aware of everything, even you, Owen, so aware of everything. You're looking all the time, aren't you? Oh, we just lost Brett for a second there. Yeah, anyway, we're looking all the time, aren't we? And so... You notice things, there he is. Yeah, you notice these things more. And then you start thinking, well, how did that happen? How did that happen? And I've even seen, you know, the disappearing and, and appearing moon. It just donk, it well, just appears. Well, it, it does get trippy. There's scriptures that talk about the sun and moon st stopping in the sky, things like this. And I've already spoke to you about this, Karen. We swear we've seen the moon hasten and things. Speed up. Yeah, I've always seen the sun as well. Down. Like it always, sometimes in the summer, the sun will hang around out the back of my garden and be there for hours and then whiz off. And I, I, I wonder if Brett feels the same. You know, when you when you take or you're looking, uh, sometimes the sun and the moon, they come I in fast, goes out slow, comes in slow, goes out fast, comes in fast. It just does something different nearly every day. It speeds the way it, what it's doing. It's different. Well, oh, it is I for me. When it's full. When it's full, it seems to really disappear quickly. Um, but I find when it's a waning, I don't know much when it's a waxing gibbous, but when it's a waning gibbous, you know those big daytime waning gibbous, it just seems like it's in the sky forever. Those, You know those daytime moons? Yeah. It just feels like it's just there forever. Yeah, I do know what you mean. Sometimes it's like it's so slow and then other times you think well you can almost see the, the moon moving but i tell you one other thing yeah. i mean I, I don't know if i've told owen i have said it in a chat on a chat before but somebody told me to watch the moon on when it hits the cancer in capricorn um and when it was doing that the moon for me came in for obviously from the east but it went south and then it dragged the stars for an hour back sort of dropped them off and then carried on going west. They were all going west, but the moon was moving faster. It did a heartbeat wave and it moved the, some of the stars. But do you know what? I was so transfixed thinking, oh, my God, look at that. How can I explain this to people? Because I'd need a 360 camera. I didn't look to see what the other stars were doing, but it definitely moved these stars. It brought them with them with the moon, so it went north a bit. I'm not saying it doesn't do other sine waves at other times of the year, but those two in January... I suppose it was it last year, January last year. Um, it did this like heartbeat thing, but when it started to go north, it took the stars with them. And I was like, wow, I saw it twice in mm. one month. 
So the, the moon the moves the stars around. The, the, it's I, I'm I'm sort of a like I, I think it's cool. Um, am I? Can you hear me? I'm hourglassing. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, you can hear me, yeah. Yeah, I'm very biblical and I, I'm adamant we're in last days. Um, I, it's just playing out. I believe we're, we're probably in about Revelation 14 or 15. And in Mark, there's a scripture in Mark to say that the um, there'll be signs in the stars and the moon. Hmm. And I believe it's happening now, like daytime Venus for which living. I, I just think time's up. Yeah, yeah. it's the people. I mean, what are you showing us quickly? Because you put that up. Uh, I'm just playing around. Knowledge just, will increase. That's another scripture. That's another scripture. Want, Knowledge will increase. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm thinking. Uh, I don't like to talk about the the signs in the skies, but I've seen the moon. Like I know, I know that we have moon trackers. All these programs that track the moon precisely, but I've seen it hasten and. And do um, take a course in a, in a matter of time that it should not be able to do. Like it did a little bit of a jump while I was watching it, uh, and things like this, uh, yeah, have got me into scripture. And um, I'm I'm starting to think now things like the ISS, the International Space Station, uh, could be something completely different. Could be a, just a celestial that moves in an anapod manner to all the other, all the other wandering stars. It's faster and brighter. Well, Globies say that, don't they? Globies say that that they that that you can see the ice. I've never seen it myself, but well, um, it, it is it, it is a fact. You can see it. it, it number you can see it, what they say it is. Yeah, okay. But it's not it, okay. It looks like a very bright star, like Venus. On right. the level of Venus, how bright it is sometimes. Some nights it's just beaming. And this thing hooks across the sky pretty fast. But um, I'm starting to doubt whether it's even a weather balloon or anything like this. Just looking at... Just call it a feeling even. Like, that uh, certain thing, something ascended so that all eyes could see... Uh, so I mentioned you're I'm describing a polyon. Have you if read Revelation? Jesus. The ISS might be Jesus. No, 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 no. Have you read Revelation? No, I'm actually trying to get a King King James Bible. I just bought one actually the other day because mine was falling apart, and I I, I got it for ten bucks. But you can Where get you can it? you can read it on your you can read it on your apps. Um, yeah, I, 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 I read it on my iPad a lot. Um, but there, there, there's one later on in Revelation. I can't think of what chapter, but it's later on. It's after thirteen, where they talk about they talk about a angel descending from heaven, and it had had um, the key to the bottomless pit. And its name, get this, the name of this angel was Apollyon. Apollyon. I mm know -hmm. oh, it's interesting, isn't it? Huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yeah, I do have a lot of friends. What you're saying now really resonates. Really the resonates. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's imminent. Right that all comes back to the third temple in Jerusalem and Trump moving the, the embassy to Jerusalem, and we've done it as well. Um, because God doesn't come back, like, or Jesus isn't coming back like that. It's not going to be like that. Um, he, he clearly articulates how he's coming back in Matthew 24. Um, this is the, the Antichrist really resonates with me with the bottomless pit in Napoleon. Hmm. But, um, all right. Interesting. Read, re I did, I, read I, Revelation. I, re read Revelation. It's yeah, re Revelation 13. Re Revelation 13 will make your head spin. All right. I'd just, that just asking, Owen, why would it? Why is it that people can take pictures of it looking like something, but they don't realise that if their camera's picking it up, it's only miles away? Mm, it, it'd be very hard to photograph it. I think all the one the things we're seeing are, are fake. The solar panel thing. 
because uh yeah all i see it when it when it crosses over me i just see it as a very bright star just every time it reminds me of venus like that is it just looks yeah so it looks beautiful dare i say it almost looks natural to me now it's i've never seen it myself looking like a, a space station only through the lenses of youtube and you know a couple of rare photos of people have supposedly taken but yeah the speed it's going you need the the best tracking equipment to even be able to zoom in on this thing and take a photo that's not blurry so they're showing us these crisp photos amateur astronomers supposedly just snapping this thing i think that's a whole crocker crocker shit that um I must I'm, say, i've seen, I, I I've seen that thing. What, what if it was up there before they even formed nasa that you know they they add planets like pluto they take planets away what if it was a, one of the planets you know, it, it, well, it could be it could be this Nibiru, couldn't it? They, the, yeah. one, one of these big psyops is this Nibiru thing. Uh, it could be that, and it. it um, I was just thinking of something else. It could be it could link back to this alien deception because when it all goes down, when the Great Tribulation starts, they're going to have to they're going to have to explain the Rapture, and that's how they're going to explain the Rapture is through the aliens. They, they're going to introduce the alien deception, and people like me who were going off in the Rapture. That's how they explain it to me to buy aliens but it was the rapture well yeah it's, yeah blue beams is interesting as well can i just yeah, say that, i've that seen that in crazy. i just wondered in the chat room has anybody seen that well kind of like a star or whatever it is it does go quite fast in the sky but i wouldn't have said it was that high because you're you're seeing it. I know the stars are often there in the background, but I reckon it's below the stars. Could be. Hard to tell. How, how do you how do you know where it is, Alan? Oh, the ISS tracker. You, yeah, I just wait until it's um. There's an app. Is there? Yeah it it's got a very weird orbit. Even it it doesn't really make sense on the globe either that it's orbiting so um erratically so that it covers almost every point on earth at one stage within the year I take a lot of photos every of country death, yeah so i'm thinking if this thing yeah it, i was just I saying I, I take a lot of photos of stars and the best photos that i get is from footage so i, I play the footage on my computer and then I pause it and I screenshot it. And they are the best photos. So maybe some of the I they're doing it that way, some of the amateur photographers get photos of the ISS. Well, I agree with you. Sure they, else they they need photograph back up. The stars like, like um otherwise. Sorry to interrupt. I was just saying otherwise if I just photograph them, they're a they're a line, a coloured line yeah. through the sky. Well that's like, the thing. Even with three second exposure stars can streak and they're moving very very slowly yeah the iss if i tried to um say with my telescope on wheels if i had tried to uh, lock my telescope on it and keep it in frame by running there's no way i can do that with normal stars but this thing is moving so so much faster than stars and planets i might add so I, I I doubt the the foot the um. I've seen a few lights coming up in the sky, way too high for aeroplanes, and moving way too fast for aeroplanes. Aeroplanes, but then I see a lot of aeroplanes here too because I'm under a flight path, so it's easy well, to not know what you're looking at. Well, if it is a beast from Revelation, it's moving too quick to photograph. I think. Um, oh yeah. For amateurs to photograph, you you need some really good tracking equipment. Yeah, unless they're doing like I see, you know, like I'm doing, and screenshotting the footage when you pause it. But even that's not super crisp, like a photo. Well, even then, you screenshot. You're going to need uh, a bit of exposure. Well, screenshot um, on my laptop. So yeah, but who took the photo for you to screenshot? Um, I did. I I photographed. 
uh, I screenshot a lot of the stars that I photograph because they move across the screen. And it only takes about 10 seconds to get across the screen, especially if they're really close. So I screenshot yeah, a lot of those cool. and they look completely different to when they're moving. And it is not really crisp. Well, some of them are crisp, actually. But they're not how stars are yeah. supposed to well, You're right. I, I, just mean, I just mean with Zoom. If you're going to use any any kind of optics, like if you're going to zoom in on something, those apparent motions scale with the amount of zoom you're using. So if I yeah. zoom in on a star that looks like it's going very slow, the more zoom I use, the faster that star appears to be moving. To yeah. until if you're yeah. using a lot of zoom, you can't even keep it in there for like a millisecond. No, I wouldn't think so. No. So I'm, I'm talking the close-up photos. There's only a few on the internet of the ISS solar panels and body and everything supposedly taken from the ground by someone just holding a camera. That's yeah, uh, that that's impossible. Yeah. Like they could take a photo of it as a bright dot in the sky, but not yep. with this, not zooming in on the, you know. Um, yeah, no, I agree with you. There's just so right. much sus photography out there. I need a good uh, Unless tracker. Unless it's only a few miles away. That. Well, that's just it. How can I? That's what I I first started photographing the moon, and I was on a cheap Fujifilm camera, and I could get craters on the moon. I could get it in focus, and I was like, "What? Well, that's bullshit. That's three hundred fifty thousand kilometers away. Like, why aren't they bragging about that? That should be all over their box. It looks like look, we can." Our camera can photograph things 350,000 kilometres away. How amazing is that? But no, there's no word of it. And yet I try and photograph something 10 kilometres away and I can't get it in focus to save myself. It says about the P900, it's infinity. <laughs> but you'd have to say that. You'd have to say those words. Yeah, with stars light years away. Yeah, light years away. What a load of rubbish. Well, they don't. They move. If you if you're filming a star, they go in and out of focus. They come in and out and in and out and like they're throbbing or something, pulsating or something, as they move across the sky as well. But if I let my camera just go on autofocus, it zooms in and out, in and out, like before the star comes in and out of focus. If I have it on a set. Hmm. Okay. Just asking Brett, Brett, is yours more observation or is it more taking pictures? Because like Owen's gone, don't you, Owen? Or you've got you, you use your camera to take stuff. Um, Trouble about's got a P nine hundred. What do you do yours with? With your phone, it's observations for you. Brett, uh, but both. I have got a P nine hundred as well, but but oh, oh really? Uh it's all right you're there again sorry it was me carry on i'm back okay yeah, yeah it's a bit of both it's a, it's a bit of both um so i've got a p900 uh it's mainly observation because i'm constantly looking at the sky i must look like an idiot um but i, I um i've got a p900 but it's got an error it's got i turn it on and it won't work it says there's something wrong with the lens or something so it hasn't worked in about a month so it's stymied ah. but mainly observation yeah, anyway, Trouble About's got loads of videos about stars. She's into the stars, aren't you? More. And the moon, I suppose. Oh, she's muted now. You there, Trouble? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I started on the moon because when I had my stroke, my sight went, and so the moon was what I was able to judge how my sight was improving. So I've been watching the moon for about seven years now. Um but then I got the P900 and I can actually see stars. So stars have sort of taken my attention a bit more. Um, and I can't really get near the horizon. It, it either sunset or horizon. I have to go away from my house and I can't drive. So I sort of mostly look up. That's, cause that's what I can see. So, Sorry. But yeah, I've got heaps of the moon. <coughs> thousands of photos. I, have, I had, had to buy hard drives because I keep filling up my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> well, the whole thing with the craters, they are giving us uh, the size and distance they're giving us doesn't work if you look into angular size equations and things like that. I haven't looked into it much, but 
you can work out how big an A4 piece of paper looks at a certain distance away in your camera and work out angular size off that. Um, but I, I just cheated and, and compared it to photos of Earth. Like, um, There's an island called Socrates, which is... Uh, I have to find it again, but like, there's islands on Earth that are supposedly the same size as Tycho Crater. Yeah. And on Google Earth, if you zoom out just a little bit, they become invisible. But they're saying Tycho Crater is the same size as that, yet yeah. the moon's like three times further away. Well, so the, the moon a reflection of the moon. Doesn't add up. Um, but to tell you the truth, when I, I had strokes and I first woke up, the, the, the whole model makes no, made no sense to me because I thought here we've got the earth in the middle, we've got the sun on one side, the moon on the other side, yet it's a full moon. Well, yeah. The earth in between blocking it. And I know yeah. that, you know, they're the, the, the going to elevate and everything, but seriously, it, it took me a year or two to wrap. I had to flip everything completely opposite. It's Like... Uh... Taken ages to wrap my head around the fact that the Earth could be in between the Sun and the Moon, and somehow the Moon is full. Wouldn't that suggest that the Earth is like magnifying the, the Sun out the other side, yeah, reducing the like, Moon? I don't know. Uh, you seen <laughs> what, almost full moons during the day, things like that. Yeah. Blood moons. It, yeah, it's all. It, it doesn't make sense. No, and I can't remember if I saw them as a child, but I. My memories are that it's mainly a nighttime moon, but maybe I did see it during the day. I don't remember, mate. I have no idea. Yeah, we've asked this question before. Chat room, how many people remember when they were smaller seeing the moon out in the day? Do you remember it, Brett? Do you remember it, Owen? Patricia? Well, my mum has a story about how my sister wanted the moon, so my mum, she must have read it somewhere, so she got a bucket of water and reflected the moon in it and told my sister, there you go, it's in the water, and then she cracked the shit because it wasn't there during the day. Um, and I don't remember any stories of a daytime moon. So I, I don't know. Hmm. But, uh, are you saying like when it's full or? Saying, do you remember when you were little seeing a daytime moon like we do now? At any time, even a quarter. Yeah. Hmm. You do? Yeah, 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 That's I do. Bad, yeah, I must well, have yeah. been ignorant, yeah. completely ignorant. Not... Yeah, That's what too. my first... My first memory of the moon, and I remember it blew me away, I was about five, um, and I looked out and it was a waxing gibbous and it was up in the afternoon, and I, I remember saying to Dad, what's that? Yeah, no, I <laughs> definitely remember daytime moon. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, waxing. yes. Yeah. It makes a question, even just seeing that, I reckon. But um, like Brett said, the globe has destroyed it. You get selen selenellian eclipses. Uh, blood like, moon. There's all these events that just you know? don't work on the globe. Like, you can't have a lunar eclipse. And then you try to explain the model to people. Like, do you realize that a blood moon is when you're actually not seeing the moon? It's, it's an illusion and, and it actually happened a few minutes ago. Like, just, I can't even wrap my head around it enough to explain it well, to anybody. I think these are things we have to work out. They're obviously happening, happening in a different manner than we were brought up to believe because we're and not the, on yes. the globe there's so many ways to just and the moon seems to roll slow. across the sky it just rotates it just rolls and so does if, the stars if we're on a globe the, the uh the horizon will be dropping down it's and we feel movement like i trust my senses i'm not senseless yeah. my senses tell me we aren't moving and, and yeah, they got the perihelion and aphelion and the so uh, they the, the, the senses, like, and pretend that we're moving. And then they give you this this comparison of being in an aeroplane. And I'm like, are yeah. you kidding? My body doesn't have a shell around it. Like, take take the cover off well, the aeroplane, and you don't feel it moving. And if the aeroplane turns, you feel it. Yeah, and if it's blindfold, you put me in the like, back of a car. I'm gonna feel it moving. If the velocity changes. Don't forget, 
big earthquakes can cause a, a wobble in the Earth's rotation. So imagine what that would do. Yeah. That's what they, that's what they say. I'm not saying that. That's what they're saying. It can cause a, a, a wobble. So they want us to ignore our senses and pretend yeah. that something's happening. Well, they've done very good at that, haven't they? Because most people believe in space that doesn't exist, and we've gone to the moon, and there's an ISS space station up there. We're all watching <laughs> television. Television. They've done. They they programmed us really well. Well, oh, this just it's extreme. It just goes on and on and on. You know, medicine's poison, and it's like what <laughs> laws aren't law like laws. But, oh my god, yeah. School isn't teaching you stuff, and experts aren't experts, they're experts, they're not out in front anymore. They're the part, you know. It's... Oh. <laughs> yeah, when we realise or do you do you feel that Australia's quite awake or is like the living dead, like it is here? Oh, dead as a data. Yeah. Yeah. There's a few awake well, people, but they're few and far between. You sound like a, 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 a weirdo when you try to talk to them. <laughs> I, I I say I say anything. I, I, I mention nine eleven. Nine eleven this sort of there's a bit of appetite here, um, but that's moon landing a little bit, but that's about where it stops. That's about where it stops. Yeah. Just a okay. little bit of a, you know, 9-11 was an inside job, just something like that, um, but that's where it stops. My cousin my cousin goes, I don't think we, we landed on the moon. That was about a year ago, and I mentioned 9-11 to my dad, and he just hit the roof. <laughs> He's like, nah, wasn't having a bar of it. But I did manage to slip in usury because I was trying to talk to him about, you know, the fiat currency and I didn't quite have enough language. But when I used the word usury, they seem to know what I'm talking about. Um, and then I can pull it into the banking world a bit more. But um, still not very good at it. <laughs> no, I'm mostly concerned on football matches and things. Yes, yes. No. I actually said that in one of my videos. I said that in one of my videos yesterday. It's amazing. You sit down and read the Bible and you're tired after five minutes, but yet you can watch the sports game for hours and be enthralled. <laughs> yeah. Did you get your... And yet all all the answers is in one and the others just dead, dead time. Brett, yeah. what does your family think about what you're doing then? Oh no! I've got a. Uh, it's it's caused quite a bit of conflict um, between me and my parents. Um, yeah. My brothers, my brothers definitely um, uh, have got an appetite for it. I, I can speak openly with my brothers, and I think my brothers are fairly aware um, because of the stuff I've said. They're fairly aware of what's going on. I wait to an extent, but just don't have the appetite that I do for it. It's, it takes a certain type to be where we are, guys. It takes a really? certain type of people because because it crushes your belief system. And for me, my journey, so I've been awake now for about two and a half years, and my journey, it's been torturous at times, torturous. It's also um, a release. And I've just, it's a release. Uh, it's a release, absolutely, yeah. Like there's no, you know, yeah, the lot. Cure, you know, and there's no new bombs, and there's, there's no aliens. Oh, my God, to learn that there were no aliens invading was such a relief. <laughs> but the way I sort of... The, the way I come into it, the way I come into it was I, I went moon landing, 9-11, um, JFK, and then I went to World War II. And that's what that's what crushed me. When when I learned about World War II and everything associated with that, that's when I started with the Bible. I thought, whoa, this shit's real. Um, and that's where I sort of, that's where I got into the Bible. And I had about 12 months there where I was just like, why me? Why am I here? What is this place? What have I done to deserve this? You know? And the well, price bit for me was yeah, the missing link. Up gives you freedom and gives you peace, gives you more peace. But unfortunately, yeah. it's taken great from everyone else. Exactly. Yeah. And that's okay. That, 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 and that, that's where I keep coming back to Christ because he's the missing link with all this. He's the missing link with it all because there's scripture after scripture to say that you will be hated in the world, you will be condemned in the world, you will be isolated in the world. The I more I read the Bible, whoa. 
I mean, to learn that you can heal well, yourself and, and diseases. Nah. I know that what creates. Can you remember back? Can you remember back, though, before you were awake? Like, can you go... So I'm quite good at this. I can go back and re remember the way my particular time, and that's what I do. And I go back five years, ten years, and I, there's no way anybody could ever have told me any of this. And I, you're mad. You're mad. And I wouldn't have wanted to know. It, but yeah, when, when, I, when I... The way it started for me is a guy, and he's still a, a dear friend... He, he, got, he said, look, will you read a book? I said, all right. And he, I read a book about the moon landing. And then it just, it just you can't deny it after reading this book. And yeah, then it just clicked. I thought, well, if they're lying to me, if they're lying to me about that, what else are they lying to me about? And, and on it went. It seems to me that it's about getting the right information in the right way. I mean, I heard about flat exactly. my whole life. And we all laughed about it. But as soon as somebody yeah. gave me... Um, uh, I don't know, I watched a conspiracy movie and I was like floored. I was like, oh my God, yeah. and I just wanted to know more. But I'd never had information like that given to me before. I just had dumb comments and shit stuff. Yeah, and people say stuff that it doesn't resonate with you. They just use, and I, I said this in one of my videos the other day, you've got to, it's like talking to a child, and I'm not saying people, uh, adults are, child, are children, but it's like talking to a child. So when you talk to a child, to get the best conversation out of that child, You've got to talk to them on a level that resonates with them. You know, what interests them? How, what tone do you use? What sort of things do you talk about? And then when, when, you, when you're trying to wake someone up, they'll make a comment and you go, right, I'm going to zero in on that comment. I'm not going to go for the jugular. I'm not going to give them all this information. I'm just going to plant a seed. And then I'm going to walk away and I don't even know what the outcome of that's going to be. I'm going to walk away and hopefully they'll take that seed and go. And, it's like and that's, the, that's, that's how I do it. Yeah, I need practice. Throw a truth bomb and then you run a mile. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and to, to me, you you, I, I'm at a point where I'm trying Sorry, to mate. put, just trying to slam a whole tree right onto them. No, you can't. It just doesn't no. work. I've, I'm no. got a bit of trouble. I'm banned from my local pub. I don't know about the <laughs> shop. The couple we <laughs> just hear during this interview, I think it's. Yeah, it's regarding this. They think I'm just nuts, but I'm just trying to. <laughs> You're not nuts. You're great. You are. I mean, you've got. <laughs> I know what you're saying, though. Yeah. Well, they yeah. want us to be yeah. on the spin ball, like going Mac 80 in three different directions, which adds up to about 200, God knows how many thousand miles an hour. And one of those direction lies with the with the moon and we're doing a thousand miles at the equator and zero at, at sorry at the poles how the hell does all that work? and they think they're crazy no that's they say right. ships go over the curve three miles away it's, it's ridiculous that's where i get in it's trouble i mean I, I won't force my stuff on other people but then when they drag me into their bullshit world i'm I, I'm at the exactly. stage where i'm going no no exactly. that's not true exactly that's a lie i've had enough you can't you want to yeah. go live in that world? Go live in it, but stop dragging me into it because it doesn't exist. It's not real. I don't. I don't live there anymore. So and what's that saying? You exactly can't right. help somebody unless they want to be helped. Yeah. So it's, it's like, no, you guys go and live over there, and I'm going to live here with all the happy people, and where there's no disease, no bombs. We know the truth. Some of it's pretty shitty, but at least we're getting there. Uh, and, but don't drag me back into your world. I'm not coming there. And you can't go back, I, I, can you? I, 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 at the risk at the risk of doing that to you now, trouble, and I'm not doing that. I just want to read Matthew ten twenty four, and whoever will not receive nor hear your words, shake the dust off your feet. If anyone does not welcome or listen to your words, shake the dust from your feet. That city or house that does, that does not receive your message, Jesus said that. Well, that's what I think. You can't. Yeah, if they want to hear. Same as me. I don't want stuff forced on me. But when I'm ready to hear it, I'll hear it. With, you know, yeah. Whatever. Well, we can't go That's back. what I do now. If people don't want to hear, I shake the dust from my feet and I move to the next town. We can't well, go back. We can't go back. And it's a bit It's a bit like, what's normal anymore? Tell me what's normal. Exactly. Everything's up for discussion. Still a lot of in, there's still a lot of stuff to be learned. It should be guess, exciting oh, and fun. I guess I'd rather observe than preach as well. 
Exactly. Yeah. Like, we, we haven't even begun. We have no, yeah, we you know we But you know what's really good for me, guys? Like I'm forty five now and, and, and the thought the thought that there's people like you out there, um who I frank chat with and not come across as a lunatic. Uh, to me, it's just it, 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 oh, it just rocks my world. It just it just you know it brings a smile yeah. to my face, and I just you know I just think you ripper. Yeah, so well done. Great, great meeting you. I only know a few uh, Aussie flat earthers. I, I actually found spirit in um, quantum, and it was this religious a lot of information, but there was this one religious scientist who was using maths to prove creation and. He just does it so well that, I mean, mathematically, this is... Um, oh, what are the odds? Um, in, uh, what do they call it? Um, intelligent design. That things are so intricate. I mean, you take one species out of, you know, you take insects out and this whole system well, collapses. It's just... just too, big bang. Mathematically, it can't be a coincidence. Well, in the Big Bang, I just think that's describing thought. Because, you know, thought needs space to expand in. Well, and, it's a bit cool. It's it's almost a religious creation story in itself. Just, it's just well, copying the same story. There's no stars going around our heads, <laughs> expanding. But that's what the Big Bang is. It's to take you away from creation, which takes you away from God. So, I, I, look, I've never heard of a third. There's, you've either you've either got creation or you've got Big Bang. Big Bang. I don't. I'm I'm not aware of a third. Well, I I just think. Um, it's space they've just twisted how our brain works like because there's these photos that will show you our brain working and then the neurons and it's the same patterns as what they take of photos supposedly in space um i just think space holds all the mechanics of what creates matter because matter does have rules to follow but you have all this space in between it and i yeah well who invented the rules I think they're just trying to describe geometry and light and sound. Um, it is strange, though. It's more than that, isn't it? I mean, when I was doing hotel reception work, we learned all these other models and ways to do reception work at college that we didn't even use anymore. But we still learned them or looked at them. You can't mention flat earth. You can't mention any of that. Why shouldn't it be one of the models or a flat earth of plane? <laughs> Not allowed to talk about it. That you say it to anybody who really like really even us. We just didn't know anything about it. It's not something new. It's something that's been born. Yeah. I believe I was fired from a job once um, last year, or a year before now. I was fired from a job from talking like this once, and I can't find work now. Might be a blessing. I think it is because of where I am. I don't want to contribute to the cesspit anymore. You know, Jesus guides me now. He looks after me. Um, I, I I feel blessed because I'm not contributing to the cesspit. No, and don't they say that, you know, the richer you are, the harder it is to get the gold or whatever that, that line is? So maybe... Yeah, it's true. Like it's it's absolutely true. Because it, it's, it's living in the flesh and, 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 and life is of the spirit. Well, we do yeah, have flesh bodies. So I kind of take offence that we're, you know, sometimes... Like, we have to be a little bit material. I mean, I do like my bed. And I'm a girl. Oh, um, girl. yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. We all we all love company. Yeah, absolutely. But you can't live for the flesh. Like you can't. You you, you don't live for you know you, uh, gluttony and 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 sexual pleasure and all this sort of stuff. You know, it's got to be. Right. It's you, it, it, there's a bigger picture. But yeah, yeah. You you like I'm 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 um in the kitchen now making a cuppa. You know. <laughs> well, we all want to be comfortable, but then once you get comfortable. Yeah. That's like, like, so if you live a high standard, then after a while that just becomes normal and every day. Yeah, it's it, the, it. It's about consume, consume, consume. Go to work, make more money, get more stuff, get a bigger house, consume, pay more tax, retire, yeah. die. One of the most important things is what we're doing now. We're communicating with each other. We're communicating. People are listening. Other people will listen afterwards. They don't seem to want all this. 
And money seems to be the most important thing, not the people. Oh. It's the people. Without the people, you don't have money. It's the people that are most important. And that's the bit that seems to be completely lost. It's like we've, it's like a parrot. It's like it's flipped in the last. I'm not saying it wasn't being brought this way. And they turned us into a globe in the 1960s. That's 60, 60 odd years ago. But it's like the everything has flipped. It's like the more you wake up, Every, the paragin, everything's wrong. It's like you're in the wrong place in the wrong time now. It, it used to be like you, everybody was family when when there were smaller towns and smaller places. I mean, yes, you still sort of had arguments and disagreements, and there was the occasional odd one, but you, everybody was still family until you, you didn't go steal from them and you didn't, you know, you helped everybody, you helped each other out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean that's well, not every everywhere all the time, of course. Well, what is money if you if you can't uh, share it with people and help people? Yeah. Um, uh, that's been, why that's why so many people are on drugs now because they're just searching for answers. They can't yeah. deal with the, with where they are. Well, I think yeah. it's just boredom. Yeah. Sometimes it's just boredom, and then it turns into habit and all sorts of things. Yeah. Well. Exactly. It's all part of it. I think they're flooding the streets with drugs. They're hem trailing the skies so we can't see the truth. It's obvious. We're not on a ball. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so they turn to drugs. beautiful In concrete jungles, the sky's hidden from them. They don't even have to come trail the skies to have a steeper on a ball. I mean, <laughs> they just do no, it for a school. <laughs> like, like, right? Oh, light pollution. Light pollution to itself. Just existing in a city you're not going to see shit there and especially if everyone around you uh, leaves the narrative as well it makes it harder to even start looking we can have amazing things we could have okay, look, look at that weirdo looking at the sky yeah i know i spend a lot of time the integral part of creation <laughs> weird for looking at windows, it's like oh do you see that plane next to it is that leaving big trail behind it I get all the people talking next to me. <laughs> uh, it's uh, blue because you're looking at water. It's not rocket science. You like that? Rocket science. Yeah. Yeah. Needs a medium to push off. But just on chemtrails, I think they're perfect for them because chemtrails, they, they, they work on twofold because they block the sky and they're also poisoning people. And, and yeah. poisoning people, they, 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 they've got no free thought. They've all got autism now. And they've all got these four-letter acronym mental diseases. And all they are, all they are is just people don't, in, ex, in, in quotation marks, fit in into their society. Yeah. But those people that have got these four-letter acronyms, they're fine. They're free thinkers. They're, they're the type of people we want to listen to. But no, yeah. we'll give them medication when they're eight and we'll dumb them down. Well, and it's even speed half the time. So, you know, I mean, who'd give a child speed and all that kind of crap? Well, parents are doing it. And why are they doing it? Because, because they can't they can't control their kids and or um, they, they, they're they not fitting in. They're not fitting yeah. into the paradigm. And it's, yeah. I'm, oh, geez, I'm glad I'm 45 and I don't, I, I'll never have kids again. I, 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 I just, I, oh. Me too. Oh, oh. Is it, can you imagine now? No, no one hmm. wants you to know. Oh. You have to homeschool them, but so you wouldn't be able to work, you wouldn't be able to earn money because you can't. Yeah. You wouldn't be able to immunize them. Exactly. You wouldn't be allowed to go to school. So I think exactly. that's perfect. You don't immunize them, and then they can't go to school, so then you have to homeschool them. Perfect. That's how we pull out the next generation. And probably the grandparents are going to have to do it, really. Um, but did you see the Golden Globes? Did you see the Golden Globe Awards? I saw it on no, a call for an uprising. This well, nor, nor do I, but I watch a call from an uprising every morning and he was saying on, on there that they, at the Golden Globes, they all come out in this parody skit in these in these white lab coats with a, with a syringe saying we go, we're all going to have vaccines today and they're running around pretending to give all these Golden Globe people vaccines. Oh, my God. Well, what's yeah, wrong advertising. with these people? What's wrong with these people? Oh, it's advertising. That's what it is. Every time a Hollywood just, star gets cancer, I just think, oh, yeah, you poor bastard, you're going to die, but you're actually advertising. Um, oh, it's all a hoax. Like, this Harvey Weinstein thing and Bill Cosby and all that, it's just, they're just living it up in Israel. It's just ridiculous. Kevin Spacey, it's just, none of it's real. Yeah. 
Well, the thing is, no. now we don't quite know what's the truth or not, and now we don't believe a lot of it. So we're very quite we're mistrusting in a way, aren't we? But we, what do we believe anymore? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I don't believe any of it anymore. I just believe the Bible. It's <laughs> a lie. Politics is a lie. History is a lie. The globe is a lie. It's yeah. all a lie. Yeah. Mhm. Mm mhm. The only thing I trust now is the Bible. Where did you get your Bible, for the record? Some in a, uh, in a country town. What's that? No, I've got it at Tug. I've got it at Tug or around here. Um, the name of the shop is a big chain. At a shop? Uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, it was, it was $10. I'm oh. really surprised how easy it was to get it. KJV, it's got Jesus' words in red. It's, yeah. All right. I might go online. I'm just sort of in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, there you go. You can do, do it on your phone too. I, I read it on my iPad as well because um, no one laughs at me, but I find the words a bit too small. Yeah. I have a picture of the oldest pottery of my great grandmother's that has the Lord's Prayer on it. And um, it's really pretty, and that's it's in a pride of quite, you know, place of pride in my house. <laughs> Even well, though I'm not overly religious, um, I do believe in spirit and all that sort of stuff. And, so I know there's something there, it's just... Um, yeah, I've never found a, a description of the earth that matches Genesis anywhere. So... No. That's, that's spooky. These old scribes, going through. these old monks, how did oh. they know so much? Yeah, there's exactly. a lot of truth that's, in the Bible. I'm just suspicious on it, of it because it's all written in code and I don't see why the truth would be written in code. And, and there's a lot more information in there than just one book. So it's, it's yeah, if you read the Bible, you have to read Enoch. It's, it's, it's oh yeah, it's it's multi layered. The Bible really multi layered, and Jesus said that in a parable. They asked him why do you why do you speak in parables, and he said because the kingdom of God is not for everyone, and those who seek truth must something like must find it or something like that. Must seek it out. Yeah. It can't be and easy. It can't be easy because it's not for everyone. And I, I like it. It's part. It's part of what. Um, like I'm reading. I've just read Genesis again for the third time, and it was completely different this time. I'm like, because where I am now in my journey, I'm like, oh. And now I'm reading yeah, Exodus, and I'm getting yeah. something. I'm getting something completely different out of it again. You know. I mean that that book is written in perfect perfect quantum maths. I mean, there's something special about it. This, yeah, yeah, it's just yeah, it's the center of my world now. They talk about light and radiation and all sorts of things. How do they even know about these yeah. things? But it's well, almost there's, there's a massive civilization. The roots of these stories. I almost. think it's actually very scientific. The Bible, like God yeah. said, let there be light. That's soul illumination to a T. You know that star in a jar. Um, as soon as I saw that, I thought, "Oh my God, that just reminds me of God." Let there be said, "Let there be light." Yeah. So that's God, um, creation, thought, information, said, which is sound. Let there be light, and bang, there was half. Ah. Well, solar illumination, yeah, semantics. He's talking about the, the words and the voice, similar to yeah. like um, look, saying that the universe was sung, sung into creation by a distant voice or something. So I think the Creator comes to us in different ways, in different information that we can understand. I can't understand the Bible, but I can see a yeah. lot of things out the world. Well, the Bible talks about God being consciousness itself in some parts. I'll try to find the verse. And, see, and that's really hard to even understand, get a definition of what consciousness is. I mean, I have an idea of it, but it's just it's big, 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 big Well, it, mean, it would mean... Everything you, yes. me, yeah. any book you pick up, any interaction you have. And don't forget, they don't want us here and now, and that's another thing that they do because they want us in the past. You know, yeah. they don't they don't want you here and yeah. now. Here and now, is consciousness. That's all we've got is here and now, we're together now. And yeah, um, no matter what we are, so we're all together. The chat room are here. You're here. They don't want us here and now. They want us with anxiety. Yeah, they want to yeah, work in a job yeah. thinking about the future and the past. And and guilt and shame are, are very low frequencies. That's worse than fear. So they put us in a lot of guilt and shame. Or they 
led us put ourselves in a lot of guilt and shame for not living up to these monetary standards of big houses and flash jobs and a car and clothes that prove that you've got all you know, you're a success. <laughs> well, we're, we're quite a narcissistic society now. That's that's the problem. And I, I don't know if everybody remembers James from New Zealand. He thinks and he's doing um, the laws of uh, the laws of anxiety, and there's eight of them. And uh, basically, what he's saying is that when people are giving wisdom, they think it's wisdom, but it's not. They're just giving everybody their anxiety and thinking it's wisdom. Isn't that how we can put it? That's a good way. I like that. <laughs> Yeah, he's quite good. The eight laws are on sun and moon if you want to watch them. But, you know, he's very clever and he's very articulate, James. Yeah, it's like uh, Einstein when he abolished the aether, it, the letters that went back and forth. He's just like freaking out. No, 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 it's impossible, blah, blah. And projected his anxiety in this whole other model onto the whole world. Yeah. Do you notice know, the one thing that you do get when you wake up? There is a lot more synchronicity things happening. You might be thinking something, dunk, it's there. It's either a number or it's a vision or you see it in a magazine or wherever it is, or that person talks about it. Yeah, and I've seen a, more. Lot of, a lot of numerology lately, threes, sixes and nines and things. Yeah. Very weird. I think that's also because we've got digital um, clocks, you know, digital yeah. I never, we never used to yeah. go past quarter past, like five. Even years. Gregorian five. clocks. Yes, yeah, so now that we've got digital, it's easy to see digital numbers everywhere. And I don't know if everybody else feels this. I mean, not everybody's like me, but the ether's like a telephone line to me. I feel things through the, through the, through the, just through whatever we're in. Yeah. I can feel it sometimes. I feel it with my family. I can feel it happening with people, you know, around us sometimes. On the, I can just feel it. It's like a, the ether is like a, it tells me things. I just yeah, know what's going to happen what it does. There's yeah. actual studies that talk about this stuff. Like uh, you, when, I think it's something about like uh, along the lines of 90% of the time, any, any random individual according to this test knows when someone's watching them. Do a series of tests. Somehow we know things like this. And they even went as far as putting two people in a dark room with thick concrete and steel walls and to block out electromagnetic frequencies. And uh, one person had a light shone in their eyes. And the other person was imagining a light as if there's some sort of field that could go through um, yeah. electric barriers and things are bizarre. Yeah, it's feeling, isn't it? We feel things. like, no. like They call it like, intuition. But yeah. Sense them. Yeah. And that's yeah, how we know. know we're not on a spinning ball. Because every hair on our yeah. body is an antenna. You feel that everyone's lying to you. You feel like there's this big monkey joke. There's a big... There's a well, big energy. Every um, hair on our, like, every cell in our body is an antenna. Like, we send and receive information. We are like giant antennas. Yeah, it's, uh, heard that Owen, somewhere. Do you, yep. do you follow Christ? Uh, well, I've, I've always, um, like, I, I, I ridiculed Flat Earth at first and laughed at it, but. I've never been religious or Christian, but I've always felt Chris, that I was uh, aligned with Christianity somehow. That there was some truth there, just from even secondhand hearing verses secondhand, and yeah. and I always hated how people are so quick to judge a Christian person that isn't asking for money or anything, and that are living by good morals and values. They're so quickly judged and condemned. So, like, I, I hated people bashing on Jesus for some reason. I wasn't even a Christian. Uh, recently, you, you, I'd say I am. You, you come across as, like, we, those of us within the body of Christ, we call it the body of, of the temple of Jesus. And yeah, you, come across as some, you come across as somebody who, who would be a part of the temple, part of the body. Um, you, there's a ch channel. I want to recognize something well, where 
the body across loses its way in 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 um, getting a, a, a some traction on Earth is the way people are portrayed. Like they they're portrayed as stuffy middle aged Christians who you know lead this wholesome life and stuff, and you've got to lead this life and can't be yourself. And it's not true. Um, there's a channel I recommend you for you. It's called um, I've just I've discovered him myself. It's called Brother D. Brother, I think he's called End Times with Brother D. Um, I, I subscribe to him, and you look. This guy's a truck driver, and and you look at him. He's a knockabout bloke, and he's. I think he might have tax and stuff. Such an authority on the Bible. My point being is that you can be yourself and be in the body of Christ. You don't have to be this. What do you say? This. Um, this this stereo. In, in fact, Bible and Christ is the opposite. It, yeah, exactly, exactly. And I hope I don't come across. I hope no, I don't no, come no. across like that because I, I, I do, this whole thing we're talking about now, our seeking of truth, yeah, Jesus is truth. Answers, old text. He is and truth. Text. He is truth. And and he talks to me every day and he reveals truth to me every day. Um, yeah, and and it just, yeah, just, just with, I, I really, really encourage you to read the book of Matthew. Um, I've written down that guy's Brother D's channel. What was the verse, the parable you want to uh, read? Just, just, just read the book of Matthew. And, oh, and when, when he speaks in his parables, he's speaking spiritually. So, like, when he's speaking about when when your tree bears no fruit, yeah. cut it down, what it means is, so I've got my own trumpet here, but what I'm hoping to do with you now is for my vine to bear fruit with you, right? So because you're going to go away and meet Matthew and you may come into the temple. That's what he's talking about. If they don't, if they don't listen, shake the dust from your feet and move to another town. So when you read it, just look at it through that prism. That's what he's talking about. It's spiritual and it's about following Christ and God. Yeah, I, I think you'll that. get a lot out of it, mate. And I, I tell you what, if you find Christ, you just the way you're coming across, mate, you, you're going to be unstoppable. Well, yeah, I think I'm leaning this way. Unstoppable. I'm losing friends, but. That's fine. Losing. That's good. That's a good sign. I've got Would a you... subscriber. His name's Forza, and he told me that the other day. If you're if you're popular in this world, and the world loves you, and you're successful in this world, you're not of God, right? And my whole life, my whole life, I've been an outsider. I feel like I don't belong. I feel like I feel like I've been ridiculed my whole life, and it just you just go, oh my goodness, that's why. He's in you, mate. He's in you. Read Matthew. Uh, we'll do. Yeah, Andrew, it's a, bit, it's a bit like that when you wake up, isn't it? All of it is like... Uh, uh, it's for the it's, better, really, too, looking back. Yeah. Some some relationships I've had, uh, only looking at them from this point I'm at now, I'd rather be out learning things and researching than just, you know, the football games. Exactly. Yep. I was actually injuring myself because I, I knew that I know the feeling and the um, conversations within just, you know, just things happening in the universe. I, would you, would, would I read the Bible now. Yeah. I, I read the Bible now and I, I, I can do this on this and just go, oh my goodness gracious me. And and I I will be stuck on it for days, for days because I, I it just resonates and it just it's just a game changer. It just changes the lot. Yep. I'm trying to find a verse um, for you guys now. It, everybody in the chat now, everybody in the chat now who's a flat earther, um, and they and they and they encounter somebody at um, who's a Christian who prefer one of my biggest frustrations as a follower of Christ. Is, is Christians believing the Earth's a globe? It drives me absolutely no, mental um, because because it's it's demonic. Um, read Exodus four. Exodus four. Um, it, it basically it's when when Moses uh, God's giving Moses the Ten Commandments and it says the um, the, the 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 water under the earth. Oh. Just go Genesis one one through ten, you know, and it's Ooh. like okay. Tell me it's a globe now. I just put up Brother D on the chat there too. Thanks for that. Yeah, thanks. 
Anyway, Brett, so what are you going to carry on doing then with your, with your research? I'm going to keep reading the Bible. I'm going to keep getting to know Jesus. But in terms of our conversation today, my next move, well, my next intent, unless something comes up first, is around February 6th. The, um, February 6th is about halfway between the summer and the um, and the autumn equinox. So I think I might do another video then, uh, another one on the equinox. And Sounds is there good. any way that... Is there any way that maybe Owen and Trouble can help you then? As you're in the same country and now you're talking with each other. Yeah, I've just bought a camera yeah, for this sure. kind of stuff. For sure. Yeah. yeah. I'll, take, I'll take photos of the moon. Yeah. And then just asking for the chat room, right? Who is above the lawn out of you three and who's below it? And who's above below the We're all on the level here. What, the Tropic you're, you're of Capricorn. Yeah, who, who's above uh, that Tropic of Capricorn? I'm, I'm the only one. Me, me and Trouble are below it. Trouble's just below it. She's basically, so it goes through Rockhampton, which is about three 400 k's north of Trouble, where Owen's about 1,000 k's north of it, and I'm about 1,500 south of it. Yeah, because that's. I'd love to hear from someone from Tasmania. Yeah, I was just thinking, oh, we're in a line straight up and down, really. Mm. Almost. Yeah, yeah, the three of us are, yeah. Well, you never know. Someone might watch from there, but it doesn't seem that way. When I look at the system, odd people from Europe or other places aren't there. But it does seem that it goes like America and obviously Alaska because that's part of America. And then you'll have the UK, and then you'll have Australia. Yeah. Not all the other countries. It's not like I know that Jin's there. He's living in um, Japan, but you don't get a big readout for Japan. And there's thousands of people watching flat Earth from Japan and stuff. No, I know there's a few. Asian no, see, because ones. I think that with those equatorial type places and the places between the. Um, between the tropics, they wouldn't see strange stuff. So I spent six months in Manila in 2010 from, from December through to May. And I, what I noticed was it was ex exactly the same every day, that the, the sun was in the same path every day. It's, it rose, it set, it, it was cloudy, just everything was the same every day. But when I was in Singapore... I remember looking. I remember thinking to myself, and I wasn't a. I, I wasn't um, awake then. I still thought the Earth oh. was a globe, but I always thought. Get this. I always thought there was a firmament. I always thought there was a roof. Um, and yeah. and before I woke up, I remember thinking, "Gee, the sun's close to me here. It's. It feels like the roof is like oh, so yeah. close oh. to me here." Oh, yeah, I didn't. And that was in Singapore, which is basically on the equator. Yeah, I'd say sometimes the sun looks pretty low in the sky here as well. We're really close. I just feel like the equator is closest to the firmament. Now, I think the sun might be the end of a torchlight. I don't think the sun's thing of its own, so I think it could still move in ways that we don't understand. Yeah, and um, some high-altitude balloon photographs of the moon put it the moon as a torch. Right, I found it. Like a torchlight. All right, I'm getting hassled by the cops. I don't want me to go down to the cop shop, but I just. Oh, what's happening? Yeah, this thing. Oh, just shit. I don't know. Um, I'll I'll let you know soon. It's probably. I do have a feeling it's probably for flirting with a girl. I mean nothing by it, just a boost of confidence. You know, telling her she's um, attractive. She smiled at Mate, the time, but they overthink it, and then days later they send the cops every time. The scourge of Australian society is, is the scourge of Australian society is social progression, and you're a victim of it right now, mate. They 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 just think every everything now it's just eroding God, all these values, and it's just eroding the family and free thought and. You can't oh. even pay anyone a compliment anymore. 
You yeah. can't pay anyone a compliment. And it's just this social progression. It's the scourge of society. And if you disagree with it, you're out the back door. Well, I'm going to have to get you guys. Well, later on, I'll talk to Karen. I'll get all your guys' YouTube channel, subscribe, and I'll try maybe get your Facebooks and do another one sometime. But something Trouble said about quantum physics, this is the first verse that sort of blew me away. Like I just opened the Bible once and thought yep. I'd read but So I was looking into science, um, quantum physics, light, how light propagates in space. You can't see it, things like this, uh, radiation. Anyway, uh, the Lord, which time, well, the Lord wraps himself in light as with a garment. He stretched, stretches out the heavens like a canopy. But just that first bit I thought was scientific. The Lord wraps himself in light as with a garment. Um, everything's made of light radiations, really, when you look at it well, according to modern-day science. So, What book's that from, mate? This is um, Psalm 104, Chapter 2. So I'm not Beautiful. even sure. Cathiotes. The Psalms are Psalms. the Psalms are a beautiful, beautiful book when you're feeling down about the world, when you're feeling glum, when you're feeling blue, you just pull out Psalms. <sighs> the uh, the Lord Spirit Consciousness wraps himself in light, radiation, vibration, frequency, and matter as with the garment. So there I'm I think they're talking about spirit in a scientific way. They look that's biology. Yeah. It's a tiny little sentence, but it's talking about deep biology and science. Um, and these these are just Remember monks that were walking around with donkeys. I don't know how did they know about light and radiation and things like this. Well, I think I think well, that's we're how advanced I see it. in the past. I think we we're but, much more advanced in the past than we yeah. are now. Me too. There's no doubt. Yeah. And I think there was um, definitely a evolution. There was definitely a more there was definitely a more direct connection to God in the Old Testament. And then when Jesus died at the cross, the new covenant was formed and we no longer have that direct link. The only link through God now is through Jesus. Um, but I definitely think back then that God was talking to them directly. Yeah. And that's how the Bible was written. That's how the Bible was written. That's how, that's how Moses wrote the first four books because God was talking to them directly. Yeah, well... Um how, how do you uh, how do you even define advancement? Really, we right now we're defining it as just technology, and we're just damaging the earth more and more. And we're saying that it's you know evolution that we're making progress. We're becoming smarter, but it's not true. Well, I've no, got a coming freezer. dumber. I've got a fridge that's think... going to last seven years, and whereas my last fridge lasted thirty-five years. So, I don't know. Things are getting better. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. that's right. We're in the end days. Like, you can see the flat earth movement on Facebook. There's way more than they're saying. It's not 3% yeah. of the population. I do bump into a lot of people that are awake, and especially even in, in companies. It's not just that, Owen. We're looking at, like, say, Australia, Europe, and America. They believe in the globe, but the uh, Native Americans don't. The Native people in Australia yeah, exactly. don't. So it's, it's actually a small yeah. section that believe we're in the globe. This is the and we are the minority. White man is the minority yeah. on this planet. We, we we think we're like a large number, but we're outnumbered. No, it's um, just because we associate with other white people and listen to them. Yeah, we're outnumbered by, by white people. That's the only propaganda but, that we hear. You said planet. Who did? Sorry. Me. You did. It wasn't me this time. <laughs> I did. You did. I heard you. I heard you say it. But no. <laughs> um, <laughs> Go to the door. Really call. This, um, even just what you've said, even your videos about this summer solstice, I've learned a lot looking into it. I'm looking into lenses more now, just from Karen arranging this and me looking at your videos. Like I was looking at this all years ago. But coming back around and looking at it again in more detail, I think I'm starting to put the pieces together more and more. So, music to me is, mate, because Correct. that was my sole intent. That was my sole intent when I did it was to create conversation. Yeah, I know. And that, 
and, and the fact that that conversation's now stirred and there's been, I've, I've had a look at the chat numbers here tonight, there's been 50-odd people in this chat all night. Um, so that means there's an appetite there for it as well and all, all these people have heard it. As well. That's all I wanted was to create the conversation. So I'm delighted. Oh, great stuff. And, yeah, yeah thanks. you'll have and to come back again. Nice meeting you. Trouble, I'll have to get you real name. And yeah, we'll do it again soon. Maybe a better day. I'll have more sleep. And uh, you, you be, uh, you've been so. terrific, maybe mate. Re- read back here, and I, I'd love weekend. to talk to you again soon. Yeah, maybe we could do it more at a weekend, so it doesn't have to be quite yes. so early. I don't mind coming on a little bit later when it's the weekend. But I mean, I think uh, you, you've got to go, haven't you? Yeah, the timing's not bad. Eight o'clock's fine. It's just uh, I had a whole bunch of family stuff last night, and I got a brand new camera last night, so I was too excited to sleep. And I'll share some some star trails with you guys soon, and we'll hang out again. Might even meet you. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Oh, love you, Rowan. Thanks, Thanks Owen. Good Great meeting you, mate. Yeah, you too. Bye. Thanks for joining Thanks, us. Thank you, Owen. Cheers, bud. Bye, Owen. Gotcha. Bye, darling. Good luck. Oh, sorry. I, I, Owen's one of my first flat earth friends. And uh, even if he's quite quiet, he's a bit shy. He's done some amazing research. Yeah, he's good. He's great. Yeah. So we've been going for nearly three and a half hours. Do you think it's a good time to finish up now, guys? Yeah. Hey, I, I, I need to go to the little boys' room. <laughs> if, I, if I say before you like run off, uh, um, Brett, we'll say goodbye off air. Sorry, we'll say goodbye on air, but us on the panel will just say goodbye to each other off air. Okay, so well, it's been a very interesting talk. Um, we have talked about things, but I'm sure we're going to talk again, and um, it is very interesting. And Brett will probably have a bit more information next time we speak to him. And he's, um, I've really enjoyed the hangout, and it's been great with. Gathica, Owen, and um, Trouble About, and our Patricia, who's sitting there. So thanks very much, chat room. We're back tomorrow. Boys nap tomorrow. Jin in the chat room. He's on tomorrow night. So see you tomorrow. And thank you, everybody on the panel.